Welcome back. Behind me is my latest purchase. It is a J.I. Case Company model LA tractor. I believe it's a 1949. Just picked this up at a consignment auction. No real rhyme or reason other than I saw it the other day. It just looked big and cool. So I went back and went ahead and bought it. So it's pretty straight, pretty original. Um, I, I believe it's been repainted, but it's got the original case gauges in it. And if there's anyone out there that's interested, there's the serial number, 5329283. It's missing the battery cover and the toolbox that would have went over there. But other than that, it's very straight, very original. Wheels in nice shape. The only play is in the box itself. All the kingpins and the tie rod ends and stuff, they're tight. Rear wheels are in good shape. There's no fluid in them. The tires are old, have some cracking, but the front ones are pretty rough, but they've sat flat, kind of peeling off there. And these are 18 inch front front rims. So, but the big problem with this thing is the engine seized. Uh, had it at the auction, couldn't spin it with the fan, but was able to put it in gear and rock it several times and we're able to get the fan blade to twitch but that's all i know since it's a consignment auction i don't know any history how long it's sat or anything like that i'm guessing 10 to 20 years based on the color of the fuel in the fuel bowl and the smell in the fuel tank but to start off i'm gonna go ahead and get a bore scope i'm gonna pull the plugs out and take a look down there see what it looks like Hopefully nothing too crusty and put some penetrating oil in there and let it soak for a few days. So these tractors were built between 1940 and 1953. This is a 403 cubic inch four cylinder gasoline powered engine. They're governed at only about 1100 RPM. That plug looks good. That looks really good, actually. Kind of suspiciously good. But at 1100 RPM, they, uh, they make almost 60 horsepower. So pretty impressive for what they are. They're a big, heavy machine. 7,500, maybe 8,000 pounds. Like I said, this one's got a couple wheel weights, so it could be closer to the 8,000 pound number. That one looks really good, too. They're, they're not uncommon. They're a little more uncommon where this one came from in uh, Northwest Ohio. This one's kind of tight. But they were, I think they were kind of more of a, not necessarily a prairie tractor, but more common out west where they were bigger fields. You know, back in this era, you would have seen a lot of like 40 horse tractors around here, not 60. This would have been one of the biggest tractors in its day. Yeah, so that's the cylinder we got an issue with. Got some rust on it. Doesn't look terrible, but definitely some moisture. In number three,
Yeah, I think number three is the only one because this one's coming out easy as well. Yeah, number number four is a little dark, but looks healthy. So we're gonna go ahead and this is cylinder number one. Looks like it's got some moisture in there, some condensation type moisture. Got a valve hanging down, looks okay. Yeah, I don't think we're stuck here. This is cylinder number two. Similar deal, we got some condensation going on. Some light rust on the cylinder walls. Uh, maybe a little around the, around the edges. But, all in all, it looks pretty good. This is back in number one. Yeah, this looks, this looks all right. Looks like we've got a dead wasp or something in there. Uh, I think here's where trouble is. This is number three. Yeah, we've got some rust there. Piston's almost at the uh, top of the cylinder. We got a little ways to go, so that's good. It's not stuck right at top dead center. But yeah, not the worst I've ever seen, but we've definitely got some moisture in there. So we'll go back to uh, number four. I'd say number four is the best looking one. Doesn't really look like any moisture in number four. I'm gonna get some penetrating oil and we'll put some in each of those cylinders. What I've got here is just some automatic transmission fluid and some acetone mixed together. Some people swear by it. I've never used it. For much but I've been trying it out lately and it seems to work I'm just gonna go ahead and put several pumps in each cylinder temporarily screw these plugs back in for now and we'll let this thing sit for a few days and allow this concoction to do its work hopefully we can come back in a couple days and rock it back and forth and it'll come loose and in case you were wondering what the top speed of one of these 6.2 powered military trucks with about 11,000 pounds behind them is it's about 58 flat to the floor 58 miles an hour back here a couple days later let this soak I'm gonna jack up the right rear wheel of this thing and rock it back and forth and see if we can get that engine loose I'm gonna put the transmission in fourth gear these have kind of a different style shifter so it's kind of an H pattern. So the center and down should be fourth gear. That's the highest gear. Now I've got you placed here so you can see the fan blades and I'm gonna rock the rear wheel back and forth and see if we can get the engine to turn. It's twitching. 
trying to get a little heat in there. Maybe help that stuff break loose. I went ahead and took the binders loose and took it down off the jack. I'm going to see if I can use the whole tractor to rock back and forth. See if that will give a little more force onto it. See if that will get it loose. Well, that did no good. Well, I don't have a hand crank to stick through here. Um, I'm gonna try to make something. You can just drill a hole in this piece of pipe and stick a bolt through it once it's through the casting. That should work. Yeah, that engages both sides. And go ahead and put a pipe wrench on it. That's not really doing any better, it's just making the fan jump about the same. I'm going to go ahead and see about rocking it back and forth with the truck. Just pull forward, hit the brakes, backwards, hit the brakes. Well, I guess I should have used a thicker pipe for that. Gotta get that out of there now. All the rocking back and forth just seems to be skidding the tractor forwards on the trailer. So I'm going to let it soak for another day or two. But first, I filled up these cylinders. And I'm just curious if they're draining down or if any of them are pooling up. Like they're, you know, if it's pooled up, it's probably seized all the way around the piston. So I'm going to put a bore scope back in it and uh, see what they look like. This is number one. It's not really coming into focus well, but for the amount of oil I've put in there, it looks like it's draining down. And cylinder two. Cylinder two is full. So that one's seized up. And this is number three number three is the same way looks like it's holding fluid on top and number four looks like it's draining so number two and three are stuck so i'll go ahead and let this sit for a couple days and we'll check back 
Well, it's been another 24 hours and I put a bore scope back in cylinder two and three. And cylinder two, the oil has gone down and cylinder three, it's still sitting on top of the piston. But I need to use this trailer tomorrow, so I gotta get this thing off. Well, while I've got it like this tied together, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in gear and rock it with that tractor a little bit. Well, there you seen we tried to drag it around pop the clutch a couple times but it's you know that fans just barely moving that that number three piston is still is still stuck so really don't want to end up taking it apart so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give her a few more days or a week to to sit 
So this thing has been going on a week now with the cylinder soaking and number three is still holding fluid like a lot. Nothing's seeping past the rings. So I'm going to see if we can force it a little bit. I've got this. What I, I made it a couple years ago for testing compression, but it's just a spark plug with a quarter inch pipe fitting welded on but I'm going to go ahead and put shop air to that number three cylinder and uh, see if we can I don't expect it to break the engine loose but I'm hoping to take some of that oil and force it down past the piston and the rings and just get it soaking a little better so I can get it freed up start I'm just going to take this and thread it in Which it it's kind of surprising to me. It seems like this cylinder, the uh, the valves are closed. Which I I expected them to be open, and this somehow had gotten moisture in it externally. But maybe this one, the valves are closed and any condensation um, just couldn't get aired out. I'm not sure. There's bubbles coming somewhere but that sounds like head gasket bubbles to me. I don't see any in here yet, but sure sounds like it's bubbling up through the head. So this thing might have a cracked head on it. Well, that's better. It's just leaking past an intake valve a little bit. It's gurgling through the oil bath air cleaner. Woo! Man, I thought we thought we were gonna have to put a head on this thing for a minute. I think we might be all right. Another day later with air on it. It ain't off. moving at all. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Got a little more solid piece to put in the front crank on this thing instead of a piece of pipe. Got a solid bar. So maybe we can torque it a little with that. Gonna give it a couple of like shocks to it. Well, I'll leave that weight hanging on there. 
like I said, it's about 150 pounds, about four foot out. Maybe you can do the math, but it's some force. Well, I'm back today. I've got some more time to work on this case tractor. It's been sitting for about a week and a half with penetrating oil in the cylinders. Still seems like it's stuck on cylinder number three. Tried to rock the wheel back and forth. Had pressure in the cylinder trying to push it down and I've had weight hanging on the crank and nothing seems to really be getting it loose. But I think that's mainly because the piston is almost the top dead center. So I've got a hydraulic pump we're gonna hook up to that piston and in that cylinder and uh, see if we can raise that pressure up a little higher and break it loose today. Now what I mean with that crank being at top dead center, so the crank is offset, so the connecting rod is connected over here, but as the crank goes around, when it's at top dead center or near top dead center, there's really no leverage to push on that piston back and forth. If it was middle of the stroke, you'd have all this leverage off the center line of your crankshaft. So where it's at right now is like that, and you just, you know, you don't have much leverage to push on that piston. So I think the best bet is to put some pressure in the cylinder and push it downward with hydraulic fluid. And uh, I'm not going to put a ton of pressure in it. Uh, as far as I can figure, this engine would make about 140 PSI of cranking pressure. Uh, at this elevation. So I'm assuming safely some combustion pressure would be around 200 PSI. I maybe even as much as 300 PSI under a hard load. So I think the 200, 250 PSI range would be pretty safe bet. But I really don't want to blow a head gasket out. That's the whole point of going about it this way and not pulling it apart. If this doesn't work, I'll have to pull the head off, uh, but we'll worry about that then. Now, the reason I'm taking the hood off of this is because I really thought originally I could just wiggle it loose and wiggle it back and forth and I wasn't too worried about stuck valves or anything but since we're going to be putting a couple hundred psi in that cylinder that's creating quite a bit of force and I don't want that force to just blow by whatever else may be stuck so I've had worked on case engines before and both times that I was in them uh, they had sticky valves that pent, that bent push rods um the push rods in these engines i'm not sure on this specific tractor but the other ones i've worked on that were case are very soft and they bend easily so i want to take the valve cover off and just tap on each valve and make sure everything's moving maybe spray a little penetrating oil up there just and once we have it going we can see if there's any oil getting up there making sure everything's working so we're going to pull that off now this is a hunk of cast iron so two bolts and a little bit of struggle and we'll have it off there I gotta measure this thing out of curiosity it's three feet five inches from the pan to the top of the valve cover so not talking a little engine here the head the head is every bit of six inches tall About 30 inches in length. It's a big engine. That should be a lot better. I just wanted to get the majority of the loose stuff off so when I lift the valve cover off, we don't have anything falling in. Something else to note though, this exhaust manifold was something that I was looking at the auction as well. And it, it's just, it looks like it's in great shape. Um, that's something that you don't see 
very often you know a lot of these old tractors they have holes in them or they're just pitted like crazy this one looks pretty nice and they're they're not a real simple piece you know uh they're they, i don't know if they make these new anymore so it's something to pay attention to when you're buying stuff like this you want as many original components uh, as you can get that are in good shape that way you don't have to scrounge and buy used parts or fix things up that uh, may be past gone Well, this is good that I pulled this apart. So let's go to the other side of the engine. Maybe should have pulled this off a little sooner. Definitely got some corrosion on this valve. Definitely got some corrosion on this. So those would be, these would be our exhaust valves on number two and three. Um, let me get some air and a shot back on this and uh, Sometimes this looks way worse than it is you can also see on the number one exhaust valve. It's it's similar looking Here's a look at the valve cover. It's got some condensation in it uh, and rust from condensation, but it's not as bad as I expected. Now, what I'm starting to find in here is worse than I expected. Um, it looks like these exhaust valves maybe have like a thrust bearing or something on top that would so the valve would rotate. Um, those look to be in pretty rough shape. You can see this one's like delaminated, kind of coming apart. Um, they're all pretty rusty. The valves themselves, at, at first glance, they don't seem too bad. Um, but those keepers, or I, maybe you'd call it a retaining washer, this part that the keepers go in is, is pretty bad. And it looks like on this number one exhaust valve, the keepers, which that tapered part down in there is actually the keepers and it looks like this has maybe rusted out and the spring has pushed it up top and then the whole washer is sitting against the rocker arm so i think uh we're gonna have minimally we'll see how it goes but we're minimally probably gonna have to put new uh keepers and washers on the top of these valves I just sprayed them up. We're going to let them sit for a little bit and I'm going to kind of work them back and forth and try to make sure all the valves are, are uh, functioning. Alright, that exhaust valve's free. That's the main one I was worried about. Yeah, so that's number three exhaust valve. That was the main one. Number three intake. Number four intake. That was a little sticky, but number four exhaust. Got number two exhaust. That one's kind of sticky.
that's good number two intake is good number one intake is good number one exhaust is good so now that I know all the valves are loose like I said my head main concern was bending these push rods and they're long they're long push rods so long way to let that thing give out and they're not very big in diameter at all but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hook this hydraulic pump up to it and we'll have a gauge on there and see if we can get this thing to move I'm going to pre-fill this cylinder as full as I can get it uh, that way I don't have any extra air compressing in there it shouldn't take much like I said it's at the top of the near the top of the stroke So here's the setup. We got the adapters coming out of the cylinder to a quarter inch hydraulic line and that's going to this hand pump here with a gauge. I'm going to just go ahead and pump it up to, well we'll see what it takes, but around 200 or so PSI and you'll be able to see if this lever starts moving then uh, it's coming loose. The oil's leaking past the something on this, and uh, I'm assuming it's leaking past the intake valve, because that's what the air was doing prior. And I don't really want that to build up a whole lot, so see about cracking this loose and uh, letting it drain down. I'm going to take this hose off for now and try to rock the tractor back and forth because I had it up to almost or maybe at 750 PSI and that's just pushing this thing. It really, I, you know, I don't believe the head gaskets are designed to pull that much. I'm going to take the hose off. I'm going to put the push bar on and I'm going to rock it back and forth and see if we can get it jarred loose. Maybe that push something around there. I just have a hard time believing this thing is stuck this bad. You probably don't see many of these old mechanical floor jacks around anymore. This one's a Walker brand. A Walker roller car. wondering why it was at the auction anymore. 
Not everything at the auction is junk, but all the junk is at the auction. This might not be junk, but it's not great either. It's turning. It's turning, by golly. There you go, got you set up with a reference. You should be able to watch it. It's taking about 600 PSI to turn it. That number three is on the downstroke. Down to 500 to turn it. Four hundred to turn it. I'm curious if I can get it to turn by hand now. And by hand, I mean a three foot bar. No, it's still plenty stuck. Now it seems to be to the point where the exhaust valve on this cylinder is trying to open and it's tight. So I don't want to add any more pressure because that's not allowing it to open with all the pressure in there. Gonna see about pulling this thing either forwards or backwards. And uh, I would, I'm hoping if I can push it backwards, push it back up and get that oil through and uh, I've got the hose still connected, so all that oil in the cylinder should hopefully end up in that catch bucket. Curious to see if there's any or if you're fighting a bearing or something. Mm -hmm. That's a luxury you don't get on most yeah, of them, though, being able to look yeah. in the side. So, number. Three, don't look any different than number four. It don't look sludgy in there either. But yeah, it's pretty, it cranks pretty much at the bottom of the stroke. I guess we could pump four up and push it with four. That's what I'd try doing. Number Two and number one look good as well. 
yeah so i'm just gonna take number four and pump it and it'll it's gonna work it backwards probably but Maybe. it'll run it back up mm -hmm. that's what you want to do yeah so right now number three is at the bottom of the stroke and number four is at the top of the stroke so i'm going to pull the push rods off of number four so the compression stays on that cylinder and it doesn't leak off and i'm going to push number four back down and that in case will push three back up and then hopefully i can work it back and forth between the hydraulic pump and the hand crank because pulling it it just doesn't have any leverage off the crank to move this and it's it's still stuck tight enough that it doesn't want to move <laughs> gonna drain the oil back out of this cylinder so it doesn't make as big of a mess when it turns got everything primed up so you should see the fan turn in camera wise clockwise position Well, it seems like the oil is leaking past um, cylinder number four's piston rings a lot easier than any of the others. So, might be able to pump fast enough to get it going, but you have to do a lot more volume on that or a thicker fluid. It's just running past the rings on cylinder number four. This isn't gonna work. I'm kind of pondering on this thing now because we drug it down the road, trying to go forwards and backwards, and that won't turn it. So it doesn't seem to matter. And you know, and that's putting leverage directly on the crankshaft. Front, you know, through the powertrain. The crank on the front won't turn it the other cylinders won't hold enough pressure in the rings to push it backwards and that's also with a reduced mechanical advantage because they're also at the top the only reason we were able to get that one pushed down was because we were pushing directly on the piston not leveraging through the crankshaft so i think at this point Unless, you know, some miracle by allowing the engine to sit for months would allow it to loosen up. Um, the only other way to get some kind of a loosening effect in this engine is to heat that cylinder up. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to push these, this intake and this exhaust valve open. And I'm going to try to run a torch in there. And hopefully I can get enough air in there to keep that torch running and heat that cylinder up. And by heating that cylinder up, hopefully it's enough expansion to allow it to finish its rotation and get it rotating and freed up. But other than that, I, I, I'm not sure, you know, maybe we could pull the oil pan and jack a board and block up through there and push that piston back up with a rod. But then at that point, you'd you're just pushing all that force on the rod and not that what I'm doing already isn't stressful on the connecting rods but that's going to put a lot of force on it so I think heat is the only option I've got right now I've got this propane torch that I can leave pretty low flame oh no way it's staying lit now lost our flame <laughs> the 
little flame come out of there. Just like a chimney. I've had this torch running in here for I don't know. 15 20 minutes at least it's getting some heat up on the head it's faced down towards the piston i don't really think it's getting the cylinder walls very warm but as long as there's some heat differential i'll give it a try to see if anything spins here This thing was sitting overnight and uh, came back here today I put some heat under that piston yesterday heat on top of it put a bunch more PB blaster in the cylinder and I kind of missed the moment I'm not gonna lie to you I just put that bar on there and it turned so let me see if I can get it to make a full revolution and if that's the case hopefully today's the day that this thing runs again but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's see. Let's see if it'll turn complete 360. I'm not even sure if I need this bar on here. So we can use this for index. But it's still oh, honey tight. Now it locked up again. Said I sprayed all the cylinders yesterday. They should have plenty of lubrication, but yeah. So we're back about halfway up, and about the best spot you could be. The crank arm is over here pushing upward. So I'm gonna jack the rear tire up and see if rocking it will uh, help us out a little bit. I did not bring the hydraulic pump with me that I was using yesterday. Because I really didn't think I needed it, or if I did, it wasn't going to do me any good. But I could have used it right now. So instead, this is the setup. I've got my Ford 3000. I've got a pressure gauge on it so I can monitor the pressure and just feather the hydraulics. And we're going to use the tractor hydraulics to push that piston back down.
work really well and really smooth. So now I'm gonna see if I can work it back the other way. Um, I'm gonna want this to drain out though. I don't wanna put that dirty oil chance of getting it back into the tractor. tighten back up so I'm just gonna push it back down again and just gonna kind of do this and work it back and forth I guess something or it came free I think we made it over top dead center yeah I think we got it it's over top dead center you can never find that thing you just had in your hand I've turned the crank around about five or six revolutions it's freed up it still has a little bit of a tough spot uh, when that number two and three pistons when they come up so in the third cylinder where it, it was really stuck but I'm going to leave the plugs out of it. I'm going to try to throw a battery in it. I got 12 volt here. This is a 6 volt tractor, but I unhooked the generator. So there shouldn't be any issues. There's no distributor on this thing. It's all a magneto. So I'm going to throw that battery. I hope it's charged in this thing and see if we can wing it over with the starter a few times. See if it'll build oil pressure. Um, just kind of get an idea, loosen it up a little bit. And uh, if everything goes good, we'll call this a success. bit of smoke coming from our starter so we don't want to overheat that getting the rest of the oil out of those cylinders We've got a six volt battery in it now see if that makes any difference if it well if you're still watching i appreciate it so this video is getting awful long I'm gonna go ahead and end it about here uh, i'll make a new video coming up next we'll do that about getting this thing running but for now we're going to call this a success by getting this engine unseized it was a lot more difficult than i expected but i don't believe we damaged anything so that is a plus but if you like content like this feel free to subscribe and uh, leave a like and a comment tell me what you like what you don't like what you'd like to see in the future but i appreciate you all watching and i'll see you on the next one